Hi, Mike here. Most of us have to take out a loan at some point in our life, whether it be a mortgage or a loan for, say, a car. And if you do need to take out a loan, you usually want to track the repayments. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a loan repayment schedule tracker in Excel. You enter the loan amount, the annual interest rate, and the number of payments and Excel will calculate the monthly repayment and the total repayment. The tracker displays the total amount paid and the total amount outstanding after each payment has been made. And it can even automatically adjust the number of rows in the tracker based on the number of monthly payments. As usual, if you want a copy of the demo file, there is a link in the description below. Let's look at the calculator part of this spreadsheet first. Here I'm borrowing £10,000 and paying it back over 12 monthly payments at an interest rate that's been agreed with the lender of 10% per year. To calculate the monthly repayment, I've used the PMT function. The PMT function takes three parameters. The first parameter is the interest rate, the second parameter is the number of months, and the third parameter is the loan amount. Because the interest rate is expressed in B2 as an annual interest rate, but I want to return the monthly repayment, I have to take the annual interest rate and divide it by 12. The reason I've put a minus sign in front of the B1 is because if you don't, it will display the value in the cell with a minus sign. And that's because the value that's generated by the PMT function is seen as a negative cash flow. It's money going out. So if you put a minus sign in front of the cell reference, then it will display in the cell as a positive value. To calculate the total repayment in B6, I've simply multiplied the monthly repayment by the number of months. So that's the calculator. Now let's look at the tracker, which is in columns E, F, and G. To generate the payment number in column E, I used the sequence function, which is only available to Microsoft 365 users. If you don't have 365, I will show you a way that you can do this. Feel free to jump straight to that part of the video. I've put a time marker link in the video description. So I'm going to jump over to the 365 tab and go up to E2 and type equals sequence, open brackets, B3, close brackets. And this tells Excel to generate a single column of sequential numbers starting at one and increasing by one. The number of numbers to generate is determined by the value in B3. So if I change what's in B3 to 18, we now get 18 sequential numbers. Change it back to 12, we get 12 sequential numbers. The sequence function does have other parameters. You can specify more than one column. You can tell it to start at a number other than one, and you can tell it to increment in values other than one. But a full explanation and a full demo of this function is outside the scope of this tutorial. Column F contains the total amount that would have been repaid after each payment. So, for example, after one month, you would have repaid £879.16. After two months, you would have repaid 1758.32 because that is 2 times 879.16. After 12 months, in this case, the loan is repaid because 12 times 87916 is 104991, which is the total amount of the loan, including the interest. So if I jump back to the 365 sheet and go to F2, to calculate this, it's simply a case of multiplying the monthly repayment in B5 by the payment number. So I'll do that. The monthly repayment in B5 multiplied by the payment number. I will need to make B5 absolute. So I'll put the dollar signs in so that when I copy it down, it keeps the reference to B5. The problem I have here is if I change the number of payments, so I change that to 18, you can see it doesn't reflect that in column F. So I'll change that back to 12 and then change the formula. 
Let's delete those and edit the formula. So instead of multiplying the value in B5 by E2, I'll multiply the value by sequence B3. And then if I change the total number of payments to 18, you can see now that it's updating the values in column F. Yes, I know I'm generating the sequential numbers more than once rather than referencing the already generated numbers in column E. But I think this is one of those occasions where you need to break the rules, as I say. Column G contains the amount still to be repaid after each payment. So after one payment's been made, we still owe £9,670.75. After two payments have been made, we still owe 879159 After 12 payments have been made, the loan has been completely repaid. So to calculate this, I take the number in B6, which is the total repayment, and I will subtract that from B5 multiplied by sequence of B3. Again, for the reason that I mentioned before, I'm including the sequence function within the formula rather than referencing the values directly. So just to recap that, I'm taking the total repayment and subtracting from that the total paid to date, which is the monthly repayment multiplied by the number of payments. So for 365 users, that's the simplest way to do it. But what about those who don't have the sequence function? If that's you, stay with me and I'll show you. To generate the payment number, I used this formula. If the row number of cell A1, which of course will always be one, if that is less than or equal to the number in B3, which right now is 12, put into this cell, E2, the row number of A1, which of course is one. Using the row function to capture the row number of a cell is a commonly used Excel hack to return a number. So I will copy the formula down. Unlike the sequence function, this method isn't dynamic. So you'll need to copy it down as many rows as you think you'll need. So for example, if you're using this to calculate repayments for loans of different durations, or you're using it as a template, if you know you'll never be taking a loan out that's more than 10 years, copy it down 120 rows. The if part of the formula will ensure that the cells below the last value are blank. So I've copied it down there, uh, 21 rows. I will just do another two, three, I'll do a copy, 24, that's 24 rows, and that gives us two years. So if I change the value in B3 to 18, you can see what it does, change it to 24. If I change it to 36, then I have a problem because I only copied the formula down 24 rows. So that's what I'm saying. Make sure you copy it down enough rows. Column F contains the total amount that would have been repaid after each payment. So after month one, you'd have repaid 879.16. After month two, you'd have repaid twice 879.16 and so on. To calculate that, it's simply a case of multiplying the repayment in B5 by the payment number. And I'll wrap that in an if function so that it returns a blank cell if there's no value in column E for that row. So I'll put equals if, if E2 is equal to blank, then leave this cell blank. Otherwise take what's in B5 and that needs to be made absolute and multiply that by E2. And then copy that down as many rows as you need. And I'll take that down to row 25. So again, if I change B3 to 18, it now gives us the 18 values in column F. Change that back to 12. Column G contains the amount still to be repaid after each payment. So to calculate this, take the number in B6, that's the total repayment, and subtract that from the total repaid so far. And again, I'll wrap that in an if function so that it returns a blank cell if there's no value in column E for that row. 
So if, open brackets, if E2 is blank, leave this cell blank. Otherwise, take B6, and that needs to be made absolute for copying down, and subtract from it the value in F2. And then copy that down to row 25. And if I change the value in B3 to 18, then it updates the columns. And that's it. Creating a loan repayment tracker for Excel 365 and non-365 users. Well, I hope you found the video useful. If you did, please give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. I'll catch you in the next video. But until then, have an excellent day.